Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, we're going to sing the intro, Lord, you are good. And we open our Bible to Matthew 18, verse 20. Okay. The Bible reads, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. We are now called to worship. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we come before your throne of grace. These your sons and daughters have heeded your call. They await a word from you. Disappoint us not, for we pray not in the name of any man, but only in that name which you gave to men under heaven by which we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus. Let every believing tongue shout Amen. Sabbath Church. It's my pleasure to welcome you to church today. I would want to firstly welcome all our regular members. It's good to have you here today on this blessed Sabbath. Secondly, I would want to welcome all those that are watching through all the social media hurdles. Welcome. And thirdly, but not last, I would want to welcome all our visitors. If we've got any visitors in church today, if you raise your hands, yeah, it's good to have you here at Windsor Street South, and I pray that by the end of the Sabbath today, 
you hear the blessing that you have from here. Thank you. Some of us are wearing this uniform and people are wondering why, but you soon know. Thank you. So now we're going to have some praise and worship. The first song is 338, Redeemed.
everything is in Christ alone.
because he lives in Greek life form.
opening song is three, three, four. Come down, come up, every blessed one. Please stand again, sorry. <laughs> church? Maranatha. Maranatha church? Maranatha. Jesus is coming? Maranatha. When I say Maranatha church, you say Jesus is coming. And when I say Jesus is coming, and you say Maranatha. Maranatha church? Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming? Maranatha. Amen. Amen. Uh, it is a beautiful day today. The, shine, the, the sun is shining out there. We just want to give thanks to God for his blessings. And I can see the church is full today. You see, we've got nice and bright uh, colors that we can see in the house. And we would just want to say thank God for everybody that has come in today. You know, uh, this time is the time for testimonies. You see, uh, there is so much that we can give God praise about. And I can see people are already coming. As, uh, and I know that, but it would be a wish that everybody who wants to do it can come. But due to limitation of time, we can be doing testimonies for the whole day. But at this point in time, I'll just allow uh, uh, maybe one more person uh, to come for testimonies at this time. 
while the first one speaks. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Whew. The church is full. I didn't realize that when I come back to church, the church will be so full. Thank you for welcoming back. I like the color. Uh, for the past two months, I think I've been to hospital twice. Uh, yes, I had an operation in February, and all went well. Unfortunately, I had to go back again in March, and second operation done. And then, unfortunately, oh, fortunate for me, I was in discharge. I was supposed to go that day, but I, did, I never went home, and I was like, uh, okay, I'm still here. Unfortunately, I was bleeding that night from the wound. So I had to go back to theater again, which means in two months I've been to theater three times. And I'm alive. I just want to thank God and thank you, church, for prayer. Amen. Today is a very special day. It's a very special day for a special lady. She is so special to Junior and Children Ministry group. We're a team upstairs and she always seems, she's got this laugh with her that when she laughs, you just think it breaks your heart and you want to hug her all the time. <coughs> and when she came to upstairs to teach with Sabbath school, I gave her a choice. I said, have a look around to which class you would like to teach. She sat in PowerPoint and then she looked at primary and she said, and I thought I wanted her to come down to kindergarten, but she said, I want this class, I want this class. So I thought, her grandson's in that class. Let's see how it works. And to behold, she is so special to all the children that it doesn't matter if her grandchildren or children's in the class. Everyone is special to her. And I'm so glad that God has granted us so many teachers upstairs in <coughs> junior Sabbath school and in children ministry as well. We have to give God the praise and the glory because if it wasn't him, we would not have had the teachers that we've got upstairs. So Sister Esther, Sister Stella, she will tell me off because we call her Sister Esther all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she, she does this, and she is one of the most, she comes in and she can see me trying to do something, and I can hear her voice saying, come on children, what shall we do? And she just takes over, and I just leave her, let her get on with it. She is so sweet, and this is from from Junior Sabbath School and the, your team in Children Ministry. the deacons and deaconesses, we salute you today, Sister Esther, and um, we praise God for your life, for 70 years of your life. Not many of us will see that age. And we just thank God, well, no, no, not, not many of us, like my age group, like, you don't know how long we live. The older ones seem to be living longer nowadays than the younger ones. So today, we salute you, and we give you that token of our appreciation 
talk, we're giving you this token of our appreciation to you by donating a bouquet of flowers to you. So this is on behalf of the, all the deacons and the deaconesses. May God bless you. Yeah, sorry, in a bit. So, uh, Sister Stella is part of the Dorcas Women's Ministry of Zimbabwe. Yeah. And to celebrate her birthday, we thought it was fit for us to come in our Dorcas uniform because she's so passionate about Dorcas uh, Women's Ministry. And as part of Zimbabwe Women's Ministry, I would want all the ladies in uniform or not in uniform to stand. And all our men as well to stand. Amen. Our men, I can see you. <laughs> you, can, you can stand. Our Zimbabwe men to stand. Yeah? <laughs> and all of us here, mind the two, we have come to say, may the good Lord continue to protect you, <laughs> guide your path, and bless you with many, many more years. We'll sing happy birthday for her now. Amen, church? Amen. Wow. We just want to give glory and honor to God at this point in time. Now we are coming to our season of prayer. As we come to our season of prayer, uh, may I invite our praise and worship as we take our positions of prayer at this point in time to just lead us in song and invite God in our midst.
Father in heaven, we thank you once again for the gift of life, dear Lord. We come to your throne of grace, humbling ourselves, full of iniquity, dear Lord. But we fall in your presence at this time, asking, dear Lord, to touch us as you have done to the woman who has an issue of blood, dear Lord. Even if, dear Lord, it may be that we come to you crawling, may you look at upon us at this time. We thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you, dear Lord, for your church today. We've got our brothers and sisters both far and near who have come to gather with us in this celebration of your day, dear Lord. For you have created this day, sanctified it, blessed it and put it aside, dear Lord, so that we can have communion with you. Here we are at your foot of the cross. We know that, dear Lord, we are full of burdens. We have been battered and toiled by the weak. We are bruised, dear Lord, but we know where to find the solace, the refuge. We know where to come with our griefs, our pains. It is only you, dear Lord, that is able to do much in our lives, dear Lord. That is why we call upon this name that is great uh, than any other name above on earth, dear Lord, and in heaven above. We want to say, dear Lord, to you at this point in time, we have heard your children as they came, dear Lord, magnifying your name, giving glory, honor, and praise, dear Lord. Our dear sister, dear Lord, Sister Lindy Vacha, who has come to give thanks and glory, in your name, in your honor, dear Lord. We know that there are others, dear Lord, who didn't have this opportunity, dear Lord, to step up on this podium, to give those praises. May you, dear Lord, touch their lives, for we know that with you all things are possible. We have got Sister Stella, who has, um, who is three scores and ten today. We have come to you to thank you for the celebration of life that you have spared her up to this hour, dear Lord. We know that you will still continue to lead her life. As we have this special day of celebration, dear Lord, may you bless us in a special way. Be with her, dear Lord, as she endeavor in growing in knowing you, dear Lord. Touch her mightily, dear Lord. We know that, dear Lord, you are the one who is to be given glory and honor to. At this point in time, we humble ourselves to you, dear Lord, as we are going to be having your word poured upon us. May you touch our pastor who is going to be giving us this word. May you bless him in a special way. May you be with him, dear Lord, in all ways. Touch his lips, touch his brain, touch his mouth. Whatever that comes from him, dear Lord, may it that you have made him a mouthpiece to you. And all that will come will come from your throne of grace. Hide him, dear Lord. Let us not see him, but you, dear Lord as our Savior. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for everything, for this church and what it has been doing. Our church at large, dear Lord, may you make it, dear Lord, to go ye therefore, advance in your ministry and preach into all corners, for you called us with purpose, dear Lord. May we fulfill that calling and all of these things we ask and pray in your mighty name, you let the church say, Amen.
point in time, we will have our special song by Brother Ngozi Jogu. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. Higher ground, I have to thank God for you guys. Amen. Seeing you grow from toddlers to what you're doing. The musicians, the singers, God has given them something very tight. Amen. And you can only thank God when you see young people standing for God. Amen. Keep doing what you're doing. When you, when you get old and start getting gray hair, you start feeling um, hymnals having a newer meaning. One of the songs that I'm going to sing now is an old hymn that I know you all know, but uh, as I get older, it's got a new meaning now. Hello. 
day when my faith, my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back, be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall resound, and the Lord Himself shall descend. Even so. an offering and because it is well with my soul <laughs> let's see <it. laughs> let's so the deacons are going to collect the tithes and offering and the deaconess is is going to collect the church building fund um, do you have the information on the screen for those who want to pay So if you don't bring your offering with you, you can still pay it at a different time. Let's see if we can get those information on the screen. Could we come forward, Deacon and Deaconess? collection we're going to have a prayer let's pray our father and our God we are grateful for the, the week that you have led us through and we thank you oh God for the jobs that we have the skill that we have the money that we have earned and as we return our tithes and offering, O oh God, we ask for a blessing. We ask for a blessing upon ourselves and upon even the money that it will go according to your will. So bless us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Time for children's story. Sister Chawonga will be doing our children's story. somebody disobeyed God? Yes. 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 Well, the people with Moses, yes. Yes, and Mo, yes, and when he struck. Yeah, he did. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm going to talk about, I think I'll go with the story of Adam and Eve. What did Adam and Eve do? Ate the fruit when God told them not to eat. They, um, they ate, they got tempted by Satan to eat the fruit God told them not to. Yes, they did. Okay, so, I'm going to tell you a story about a little girl in a village. Her name, her name was Sipo. We'll give her her name. So, okay. Okay, so um, Sipo was with her mother in a village. This village didn't have any, any electricity. So, when they were cooking, they cooked on braziers. Do you guys know what a brazier is? No. Okay, so do you know what a barbecue is? Yes, so a brazier is similar to that in terms of you use it outside. You put charcoal on it, stack it up, and then put the pot and cook on that pot. So Sipo was cook Sipo's mother rather was cooking, and she was cooking some chicken. Some really it was it was a special dinner that she was cooking for. So this chicken smelled really, really good. Like the smells coming out of that pot were very, very tempting for Sipa to just put a stick a finger and lick and lick from there. So Sipa's mum had to go get some more herbs to make the food taste better. So she went off and before going, she told Sipa, do not take the lid off this pot. It's not safe for you to do so. So Sipa, Sipa's mum, went off and left the pot cooking with Sipo staying. So Sipo sat there, one minute went by, two minutes went by, but it smelled so good. She really, really wanted to eat from that pot. So she looked around, nobody was looking at her. Looked around again, she took the lid off the pot and what do you think happened? Sorry? She got burnt. How did she get burnt? <coughs> yeah? Yeah, the steam and the, and the water and the, and the, and the, and the soup just sp splashed on her. 
So she had face, face spots on her but spots on her face where she was burnt. So she screamed and screamed, Mom, Mom, I need some help. So her mom came running. Sipo, what did you do? I told you not to take the lid off, off that pot. So Sipo, Sipo's mom gave her some first aid. And what do you think the consequences of her burning her, of her taking off that lid off? What, was, what were the consequences? What happened? What went wrong? She got burnt, yes. So she, she mom, so she went to her mom. She cried to her mom saying, Mom, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have taken that lid off the pot. And her mom helped her taking off, helping her with her first aid and helped her cool it off, put some water in her face, put some aloe vera on there and helped her burn her burns heal. So the consequences of that, she was scarred. I mean, as she grew older, yes, the scars got better and we got smaller and smaller. So going back to the story of Adam and Eve, what were the consequences of them eating from the fruit? Being banished from the garden, yes? Yes. Yes, they had to leave the garden of Eden. So also Adam also, they, well, they, yes, they didn't have eternal life anymore. Yeah? They listened to the snake. Yeah, that's why they went wrong. They listened to the snake. So that was the, so the garden for them was closed. And even though they had these terrible consequences, God still gave them a message of hope. Do you guys know John 3, verse 16? Thank you. Thank you. So... That's a message that God gave us, despite, <coughs> despite the bad things that we've, that we, that we've done. That could, if we go to him, we repent and we say, God, we're sorry, we won't do this again, and we obey his commandments, we have this hope that he will take care of us, he will look after us, we'll be blessed, saved, we'll be taken care of if we obey what God, God's commandments. So... Who can pray for me today? Do you want to come? <coughs> Hi, what's your name? Isabella. Isabella. Okay, Isabella is going to pray for us, everybody. So close your eyes. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for, thank you for our family. Thank you for our children. Thank you for our adults. Thank you for everyone, thank you for everything, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, okay thank you everyone. special song from Mishek Mtimba Nyoka. Good morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath church. God is good. And all the time. I just want to thank God for blessing our sister Betu, Sister Stella, our, our, our grandma, our gogo, for giving her all these years. And the song I'm going to sing today is a special dedication to her. It's a song that we all know. It's uh, on Christ the solid rock I stand. But I'm going to make it special and sing it in Shona. So, Sister Betty, this is your song. Amen. Ru 
kariro uror wangu rusimbire kuna yesu handi dawi rine munu asi
The scripture reading is taken from 1 John 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it does not because it did not know him. Amen. 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 Yeah, it's time for me to introduce the speaker of the hour. The hour. He's a man of great faith. He is not known in this church, but those in green, they know him very well. Amen. I don't know whether he, they knew he was preaching here or, you know, when these uh, high preachers preach, they, we, we tend to follow them wherever they go. Amen. And uh, he comes from a well-known country of Zimbabwe. And I had also an opportunity to ask him, Pastor, how do you want me to introduce you? He said he doesn't want this fancy introduction. And he said he's married to three children. <laughs> right? He's currently studying at Newport. Can Sister Marwede, Maru, Marwede stand up for recognition, please? There is the wife of the preacher. But before he speaks to us, we are going to hear the meditation song.
I would like to greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord. Well, allow me to first acknowledge that from up here, the view is terrifying. <laughs> it's actually terrifying. Up to a point that you can actually announce that I'm married to three children. <laughs> so I, I do not blame the elder, but I blame you. I blame you. It's your fault. We want to thank God for the gift of life. But above all, let's thank God for the gift of the Sabbath. If, if you go throughout the days of the week, from your Sunday through to Friday, there's no one particular day that can be likened to the Sabbath. Because if you read your Bible, if you follow the Genesis account, you realize that on this particular day, God instituted a particular thing. He rested, yes. He blessed the day. And he sanctified it. And he gave it to men. So he says to Adam, Adam, if you want to connect, each time I turn on my Bluetooth and you're pairing it to a speaker, the speaker will say, the Bluetooth device is successfully connected. Mm. Meaning, the inferior is now connected to the superior. So during the week, a lot of challenges will come your way. During the week, a lot of situations will arise. But if there's anything that you should look forward to, it's the connection. Because when you connect, again, let me come back to my phone. The minute my phone is connected to that speaker, my phone is no longer under my control. The speaker begins to control the phone. You can actually skip songs from the speaker. Yet the phone is 20 meters away. So God in his wisdom, when he gave men the Sabbath, he was saying, let me control. Because I know you're hurting. I know you're weeping. I know you're sick, but let me control. So I do not know where you're coming from. And I do not know the situations that you are in. But if you've made it thus far, hallelujah. If you've made it to this place, praise God. If you are in his sanctuary, the presence of the Lord is amongst us. Let all the earth keep silent. Now, I was looking at the time. The time is 22 minutes to 12. To 1. So I'm, even, I'm even one hour behind. Now, 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 the professor who teaches me the art of preaching, he says, young men, what we have is the everlasting gospel. We don't have an everlasting sermon. So each time you stand time you stand before an audience, do three things. Speak up, because I've already stood. That's the first S, stand up, speak up, sit down. <laughs> so I've already stood. By the mercy of God, I'm going to speak up. And at the end of it all, I'm going to sit down. But as you're paying attention to the three S's, kiss your sermon. Now, kiss your sermon. Keep it short and simple. There's no need for me to give you all the theological backgrounds and the language. Don't. Keep it short and simple. Because people are in need of a savior. Take them to the foot of mountain Calvary. And by the mercy of God, pray for me as you're praying for yourself, that at the end of it all, 
May all our burdens be lifted. Because one songwriter says, burdens are lifted at Calvary. It will be so unfortunate you came heavy laden and leave heavy laden. So let us pray. Our Father, thank you for bringing us here. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing Love is the title of our message, Amazing Love. Now, when you look at this theme, one is prompted to ask, is there an unamazing type of love? Because if we have amazing love, to those who are thinking, thank you for thinking, you're thinking beyond amazing love. But all the Bible scholars together with those who have experienced God's love, who agree with me, that this particular kind of love, no words can describe. Why? Because even as the authors, the writers of the Bible, as they were penning, they could not, and as our theme text has put it, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given us that we, sons of men, should be called sons of God. That's a mystery. Because he, Jesus, was the son of God, became a son of men, so that we, sons of men, can become sons of God. That's a great exchange. And throughout the theological kingdom, if there's such a kingdom, they cannot fathom this kind of love. And one writer says, angels long to look into these things. That how can God become man? And man in his folly, he looks back and he scorns at his maker. And he says, we're living in a JDI world. Oh, JDI is a new term I came across this past week. JDI simply means just do it. We're living in a time where people live like they feel it. They no longer listen to the word of God. We're living in an age where people have THDs, PhDs, DODs, but no GOD. And when they stand... They are authenticated by their accolades. Now let me take you to a story. There was a man, 2,000 years ago, he came on the face of this earth. And as he was traversing the face of this earth, if I get to heaven, I want to ask Jesus, how did it feel fully knowing that you're the son of God? Because if it were me, I tell you, living in the 21st century, I want to advertise my Christianity. That's why we've coined certain terms. I'm a third generation Adventist. If Jesus, the son of God, was walking the face of the earth and never did he even advertise who he was. If it were me, I'd be like, it's me. It's me. I love it. It's me. In fact, when you read the book of Mark, it's called the messianic secret. Each time you would converse with the demoniac, you'd say, shh. Don't say it, don't say it. Because the demons would want to acknowledge and they would say, shh, don't. Just go. So as he was traversing the face of the earth, let me take you to the chapter 18 of the book of Luke. Now, if you look at this chapter, in fact, when you look at Luke, the way he writes, Luke is out of this world. If Luke were to be resurrected right now and he were to stand in front of Matthew and Mark, Mark and Matthew would call Luke a radical. Why? Thank you for asking. Because Luke is different. Luke would turn the whole world upside down what Matthew and Mark have written. Luke would give you another angle. Why? Because Luke is writing with the outcasts in mind. Luke is writing to those whom you call the pre-Adventists in mind. So when he writes, he's saying salvation has been made full and free. 
Therefore, there's no name calling. That's why if Matthew and Mark were to look at Luke, they'd say, look, you're betraying the faith. How, how, can, how can you write in such a style? Because these people are outside the commonwealth of salvation. And Luke says, no, 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 no. No one is marginalized when it comes to salvation. That's why when you read the book of Luke, Luke exalts women. Okay. He says, oh, the first people who saw Jesus after resurrection, it was not the men, it was women. It's Luke, Matthew, and Mark, when they give you the genealogy, they exclude women. But when Luke is writing, he says, no, Matthew and Mark, I respect you, but no, follow the genealogy, for we came from Adam. So Luke, when he writes, he's so particular, he appeals to me, because if it was not for God's grace, all for grace, if it was not for grace, I would not be standing in front of you. You would not be seated in the pews. So Luke says, there was a particular man. Now, you come to chapter 18, and when you look at the structure of chapter 18, it's amazing. Jesus was teaching, and I want you to follow closely. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and as he's going to Jerusalem, he passes through Samaria and Galilee. All right? So in the chapter 17 of Luke, you find the ten lepers. Thank you for being with me. The ten lepers call out, Oh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And he says, Go show yourselves to the priest. The mission is going to Jerusalem. And when he gets to Jerusalem, as you can imagine with me, the audience is purely Jewish. And when you come to Jerusalem, it's a city filled with church people. I'll be up in your shoes. Just come and follow closely. So when you come to Jerusalem, everyone walks softly in the sanctuary. Everyone is quoting scripture on scripture. And everyone speaks according to SOP. Patriarchs and Prophets, chapter 14, paragraph 3. In fact, there's a full stop before you get to paragraph 3. That's Jerusalem for you. So he gets to Jerusalem. And when he gets to Jerusalem... Follow closely because each time we read the Bible, we read it with lenses that are different to the times. If our times are going to be spoken of in 3030, they're not going to speak it in our lenses, all right? Because as we're living it in our lenses, we speak of Teslas, we speak of electric cars. If 3030 Jesus does not come, I tell you, they'll be laughing at us. They had electric cars. Now we have flying cars. <laughs> All right? So as we, as we come to chapter 17, I want you to have the lenses that depict the closeness of what it was like. So as he gets to Jerusalem, he begins to teach. And he begins by saying, there was a judge who, and a widow. Already you have a problem. Because a judge is an affluent figure. A widow is the opposite of all the social strata, a widow and a judge can never live in the same neighborhood. Here in Birmingham, you talk of little Aston. You cannot have a widow living in Aston. Why? Because how do you find yourself a widow in Aston? Now, he says, the judge was so wicked, but the woman, the woman had virtue. What was a virtue? Persistence and long-suffering. And each time she went to the judge until the judge says, hey, 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 this woman is going to hurt my face. That's the Greek in English. She's going to hurt my face. What is it that you need? I'll do it for you. And as he discourses, he says, there were two men who went up to pray. One was a church person. The other was a tax collector. So as they went up to pray, the church person stood in his haughtiness and he says, Oh God, I am not like them. The religion of the 21st century, it's now about us and them. Just like the man who went up to pray, he says, I am not like him. I fast, I pray, I return my tithe, and I'm not like him. And when the tax collector came, he could not even lift his face to heaven. And he says, oh God, I must. And Jesus says, who do you think went home justified? The sinner went home justified. Because the minute you see yourself 
outside needing grace. Ooh, what you have said is a bold statement. You have said at this point on, Jesus does not mean anything to me no more. And then he continues. As he's discoursing, the little children come. I'm still in Matthew, in Luke chapter 18. And as the little children are coming, the disciples, in sanctimonious holiness, they say, hey, 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 please, take care of your kids. They're disturbing our master. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. Let them come to me. Because the kingdom of God belongs to sin. That was a dangerous statement. As he's saying that, there's a church ruler. And he says, what? What did he say? The kingdom of heaven belongs to what? And then he comes, he says, good teacher. <laughs> Excuse me, good teacher. What is it that I can do that will earn me eternal life? Now, as the pen of inspiration was writing, Desire of Ages, the pen says, when Jesus gleaned on that man, he loved him. Why? Because he was rich. If I was going to tell you the economical lens of reading the Bible, this is your Elon Musk who's coming to Jesus. So he says, Excuse, good, good teacher. And if you follow the language closely, when he says good teacher, he's intentional. Now, in psychology, there's a theory. When I feel I'm dressed smartly, I'll walk up to you and I'll say, Ooh, my sister, today you're looking smart. Because what I'm looking for is the reciprocation or the reciprocal of my compliment. So I really know that I'm looking smart. So when I come to you and I say, Elder, you're looking smart, I'm expecting you to say, no, 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 no. It's not me, it's you. <laughs> so when he says, good teacher, he's going somewhere, he's smart, he's smart. When he says, oh, good teacher, he knows because he has done the works. He has the works. And he wants a rubber stamp from the teacher. There are people who are coming to church to seek God's stamp. Let them open the envelopes. Mine is the fattest. So when they approach the treasury, they're like, oh, sorry, I didn't get my receipt last week. Praise God for e-paperless generation that we're living in. We don't need to give you a physical receipt because yours is the fattest. So as they approach, what they're looking for is the reciprocal compliment. So when he says, good teacher, but he got it wrong because he's speaking to the master reader who reads men's intentions. So Jesus says, no, 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 no. Who told you I'm good? Because no one is good except God. Yeah. Hallelujah. When this world calls you good, don't choke on the compliment. Perfume smells nice, but don't choke on the perfume. So he says, why are you calling me good? Because there's no one who's good except God. And he says, oh, okay, nonetheless. What, what, what shall I do? And I want you to notice the I is emphatic. He knows he's got a, a record that he's getting. Many of us, when we come to church, before I came here, your pastor called me and we spoke. What is he looking for? He's looking for the record that I carry. Am I in good and regular? <laughs> Perhaps you can bring a rogue man and he can stand on the pulpit and say the wrong stuff. So this man knows he's got a record. He's a good and regular church person. So he says, what shall I do? And Jesus says, uh, have you heard of the law? And if you follow closely, he gives him the six on the other table because the tables of stones were two, four on one, six on the other. And he says, uh -huh, that I've observed since my youth. This is a fourth generation Adventist. He says, I I've done that. Now Jesus says, okay, go, sell what you have and give to the poor. Ooh, he looked at the stock market at that time. 
He says, does this man know, does he know the bonds, the stocks that are ascribed? Does, does he even know the value, the businesses? Does, does, he, does he know? He has the faintest idea. And the Bible says, slowly sadness filled his heart. And as he stood there a second longer, he says, no, 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 no. This is nonsense. And he walked away. Now, if you follow the narrative closely, Jesus looks at the disciples, and back in the day, being rich was considered saved. That's why I told you when Luke is writing, Matthew, when he begins the Beatitudes, he says, blessed are the, but when Luke writes, he says, blessed are the poor. Because he knows that Matthew and Mark look down upon the poor. So when Luke is writing, he says, blessed are the poor. He upholds those who are downtrodden. So being poor, it was automatic. If, if you lived in those times and you were poor, we, we knew that heaven is not for you. So, so, so when he says, if this is what salvation takes, I'm having none of it. So he goes away. Now Jesus makes a, a strong statement. He says, ah, because the disciples and all those who were following had a question. And Jesus says, you see, it is impossible for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Peter, this time, he's like, what? what? With the view that we have that the rich are the saved, they ask, who, who shall be saved? And Jesus says, oh, okay. It will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Than for, and Peter says, no, 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 no. So what's in it for us? Because we're just fishermen here. Yeah. Well, what's in it for us? Thank you for asking. And he says, what is impossible with men is possible with God. And at this particular time, they are in Jerusalem. Follow closely. Now Jesus says, let us go to Jericho. Now you come to chapter 19. I'll read chapter 19. There was a comment in the Sabbath school. It says, many preachers of today, they no longer read the Bible. They just <laughs> preach. So let us read Luke chapter 19 from verse 1 through 10. I'll wait for you to open your Bibles. Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. If you're there, please shout amen. amen. I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you. Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. I'm hearing pages flipping. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. If you're there, shout amen. amen. So Luke is found in the New Testament. It's your Matthew, Mark, and then Luke. Okay? All right. Are you there? Yeah. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief tax collector. Please, I want you to underline the wording. He's a chief tax collector. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. Okay? So he has this urge to see Jesus because he wants to find out who he is. Okay? Follow closely. Okay? And he could not because the press was too large and also because of his stature. So he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must, ooh, I must abide in your house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, and when they saw it, they murmured, okay, saying, he is going to be a guest in the house of a sinner. Ooh. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, behold, Lord. The half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, 
I will restore unto him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day, today, salvation has come to this house. Now, this is a dangerous statement that Jesus is about to make. For he also is a son of Abraham. The last time in Luke chapter 4, Jesus, you said, before Abraham was, I am, and we almost killed you. You're repeating it again in 19. Don't play with the name Abraham when you're in the company of Jews. It's like trying to play with Ellen White in the 21st century. We'll stone you. <laughs> oh, yes, we'll stone you. So Jesus, when you say he too is a... Okay, we have no problem when you say salvation has come to this house. We're okay. But please, please, don't put him, don't put him in the same bandwagon as we are. We are the remnant. How come you're saying he too is part of the... Do you know who he is? Do, do you know who he is? Am I close to someone today? When they come in after they hear the voice of the chief shepherd and they come into this flock, you are quick to be like them. Look at their dressing, look at their dressing. Who, 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 who gave them the permission to come in here like that? Who, who, who gave them the, the, oh, the permission to walk like that? But do you even know why Jesus is under the roof of Zacchaeus? So he says, for I have come to seek and save the lost. God will always add a blessing to the reading of his word. Now let us just talk a while and we'll close this down. Now, as they were in Jerusalem, a church person came. And he says, what shall I do? It was all about him and his works. And Jesus says, let's go to Jericho. Now they're in Jericho. And there's a tax collector. Now, I've likened the rich young man to Elon Musk. Let me also tell you about a tax collector in this time. A tax collector was worse than a sinner. If you go to chapters, four chapters before, if you come to Luke chapter 15 in verse 1, Luke is so clear to tell you, and sinners and publicans drew closer to him to hear him speak. Oh, hold on, Luke. Are sinners different from tax collectors? Oh, yes. <laughs> a tax collector is worse than a sinner. So a sinner is much more readily acceptable than a tax collector. Thank you for asking why. Now, because Rome is the one that is ruling at this time. Now, Caesar cannot be in all the places at the same time. So Caesar would appoint vassals that would be responsible for gathering and collecting the tribute that will then come into his coffers. Are you there with me? That's why here in Birmingham, it's actually decentralized. Birmingham has its own council that will deal and decide. And in fact, as I was reading the news, it's the DVLA in Birmingham that leads the laws and rules that will affect the rest of England. B Birmingham, I don't, know, I don't know why. It's Birmingham to say, I think uh, the speed limit should be limited to 20. We've tried it, it's working. And then the rest of England will say, okay, 20 miles an hour will work. So as, as the emperor would then appoint the different governors, these would be responsible. So let me give you the context. So Caesar would say, from Galilee and all uh, the rest of Palestine, I want, for instance, I want 100 pounds for the whole year of 2024. Did you hear that, Herod? So Herod would say, okay, thank you, Caesar. You want 100 pounds? Okay. Now Herod will come to those who are subordinate to him, and he would say, gentlemen, our target is 200 pounds. Okay? Oh, 200 pounds, yes. Caesar wants 200 pounds. Now those who are beneath Herod 
would go to those tax collectors, Matthew and Zacchaeus. No, not to, to Matthew, because Matthew is inferior to Zacchaeus. He would go to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, the target this year is 500. Oh, 500. So it was 100, 200. Now it has become 500. Now when Zacchaeus goes to Matthew, he says, Matthew, the target is 800. So Matthew would then say, okay, thank you, boss. I've heard he's the chief tax collector. So as Matthew goes out to the rest of the people, Matthew would say, our target is going to be 1,500. So if you come to the history in the time, if you had a cart that had two wheels, so you're coming from the market, and your cart is loaded with your agricultural produce, and you meet Matthew, Matthew would say, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's in the cart? I have my pumpkins, I have my marshmallows, I have whatever you have. And he would say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not rushing, we're not rushing, we're not rushing. Please, let's go through. How many pumpkins? A hundred. I'm going to take 20. After he has texted you, he said, by the way, by the way, how many wheels does your cart have? Oh, it has two. I need text for the right wheel and the left wheel. If it had four wheels, it would say, for each wheel, I want this tax. Are you there now? And now to make it worse, tax collectors were Jews. Let me, let me bring it to context. Tax collectors are also Adventists like you. And you know when an Adventist makes it hard for another Adventist, you really hate them with a passion. If he was Gentile, it was going to be okay. But he's a Jew. So when it comes to the 28 fundamentals, he will tell you, I know them. In fact, you've left out the state of the dead, which is number 18. <laughs> oh, oh, now, I, I, I'm speaking to, oh, oh, creation. Ah, creation is the 11th. Oh, he knows everything. And yet he wants his tax. So they hated them with a passion. Now, when, when you then come to chapter 19, when it says, the chief tax collector, even the hate is also going up. But here's the thing, he's rich. So Jesus comes. But I, you should have posed this question. Why was Zacchaeus so eager to see Jesus? He's rich. He has everything. Why is he so eager? Why is he so eager to see Jesus? <laughs> Why? You have everything. We are living in a time where you seem to have everything. Your achievements are up the wall. Downstairs in your garage, you've got a car for each occasion. If you're going way down south, you need an SUV, not the Tesla. It's a low ride. Yeah? Why would you want to see Jesus? Because he's a one-garmented man. He never went to school, the schools that you attended. He does not have anything appended to his name. Nowadays, as you speak, we have to give out a full resume. He holds a PhD in systematic theology. Not just that, he has a master's. But the men who wrote this word were unschooled men. They did not even know how to write. Take you to Peter. He could not even, when you come to the book of Acts, it says Peter was unlettered, not unlearned, unlettered. Unlettered means if it comes to the alphabet, he does not even know what comes after alpha because it's alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. He doesn't know the alphabet. He's unlettered, but yet he wrote. So we're not looking for your accolades. We're looking for the spirit of God. Amen. But Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. Why? Because the reputation has preceded him. That there's a man who's poor but he's pulling a crowd. If you come to Birmingham and you want everyone to 
pay attention to you. Just pull a meaningful crowd. Your government, civil society, everyone, your media, everyone wants a piece of you. What do you do? Who are you? How come such a crowd is following you? So Zacchaeus says, I want to, I want to see this man. But he can't. He's short. So he goes up a tree. Now, if you follow the narrative, you are supposed to pose a question. Who introduced Jesus to Zacchaeus? Who told him that the man up the tree, his name is called Zacchaeus? But as you read it, funny enough, he just stood beneath the tree and he says, Zacchaeus, who? My wife, my wild just dream today is having Rishi Suna come to me and says, Maredi, I'll be like, what? <laughs> he knows me already. Today I need, I need to, to live in your house. Are you okay with that? I'll be, I'll be blown to bits. Now Jesus says, Zacchaeus, come down. And he came down. But the church policemen, ooh, going to sinner. Remember, it's amazing love that knows no bounds. And back in this time, the custom, when you come to my house, I don't ask you what to eat. It's the modern culture where we say, shall I serve you a, a, a drink or hot tea or beer or whatever which is in your fridge. Back in the day, as long as you get to my gate, the first thing the servant would wash your feet and hands. And when you get inside, the next thing you're being given is water to drink. And the next thing, food is served. Now this is the house of a sinner. Because back in the day, just stepping where a sinner has stepped on, you're defiled. If you go to the market and you buy a watermelon that I have touched a sinner before you, that watermelon is defiled. You have to cleanse it. It has become common. That's why when Peter is sent to Cornelius, he says, I've never eaten anything common. When you come to chapter 11 and 10, Peter is not talking of the unclean animals. He's talking of the common things, the things that have been defiled by those who don't believe. I want you to imagine with me what happened when they got... To Zacchaeus' door. In my imagination, I'm sure Peter was saying, you go first, you go first, I can't, you go first, you go first. The Pharisees were also saying, how shall we enter? But remember, we need to trap this man, so for now, let's suspend our rules, let's just follow suit. They get there, and in that moment, Zacchaeus stands up, and he says, half, no sermon, no text, no quotation. What made him change his mind? What made him change his mind? And Zacchaeus is worse than a sinner. Now here's the thing. Zacchaeus is the camel through the eye of the needle. Because in chapter 18, we've got a church person, ruler, rich, and remember, when the disciples together with Jesus, when they left Jerusalem, they asked him, then who shall be saved? Because you have made the declaration, it's impossible for the rich to be saved. Therefore, Jesus suggests, let us go to Jericho so that I prove that the rich can also be saved. And it does not matter about their regular and good standing. Because in chapter 18, we have a good and regular member who has walked away. And in chapter 19, we have a sinner who says, half of what I have, I'm going to sell. I have a problem now. And the half that remains, I'm going to repay fourfold. He knows how he got it. He knows. Remember, the fourfold is because I, I added my own percentage to the consuls to the uh, governors and finally unto Caesar. He knew. That's why he says, I'm going to return it fourfold. Now here's the math. Half 
he has given to the poor. The question you are supposed to ask, who told him? Because earlier in chapter 18, the rich young ruler was told, sell and give to the poor. Zacchaeus was not there. Who told him, when you sell, you give to the poor? Who had told him that? Who told him? So may I suggest to you that Bill Gates and Elon Musk are friends. Because English will tell you birds of the same feather. So Zacchaeus was a friend to the rich young ruler. Hence the need to see Jesus. Because he said, if this religious man cannot do what his master has bade him to do, I need to see that man. And when he saw him to his amazement, he knew him by his name. And he says, no, 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 no. I will not be like my friend. I will sell and give to the poor. And the half that remains, I'm going to repay. Now, simple arithmetic will tell you if you have one whole, half you give to the poor, the half that remains, you return fourfold. What do you have in the end? And yet salvation came to his house. And yet those who do their works, who say, what shall I do? Go away sorrowful. Amazing love that God should bring salvation into the house of a sinner. I want you to follow the three steps to salvation. Number one, turn. You need to turn. Zacchaeus turned. He says, I no longer want this life of bribing and cheating people. I'm turning. If you come to Deuteronomy in chapter 31, the whole chapter will simply tell you about turning. When you turn, if you were to meet a Hebrew today and just say the word shuv, ooh, you would have said a mouthful. Shuv is the word for turn. It's not a mere turning. No. Shuv is a change of heart. Shuv is when you have made a strong resolve. When this year began, you made your resolutions. No, this is not a resolution, it's a resolve. If you come to those who do debate, the word resolve is heavy. Resolve. It means my mind, my body, my spirit is determined. And Zacchaeus says, I have determined. So the first thing, turn. The next thing, trust God. Zacchaeus, how are you going to continue living in Aston, little Aston, because you have sold everything, you've given to the poor. How are you going? He says, I'm going to trust. From this moment on, I'm trusting the Lord. Now the songwriter says, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. I'm no longer worried about tomorrow, and I'm not worried about my status, because today salvation has come into my house. Now let me pose this question. If salvation came into your life, how do you ought to live? Should we continue in our life of sin? Should we continue the downward path? I don't know. But as for Zacchaeus, he says, no, I am shoving, I am turning, and I am trusting. And from this point on, count me in, I'm your disciple. The three steps to salvation, turn, trust God, continue in his path. And that's the end. Now my question, next week, what do you think was the conversation between the rich young ruler and what happened in Jericho? Because when you read Luke chapter 19, soon after this, Jesus now says to his disciples, let us go back to Jerusalem. Mission accomplished. I have proven to you the camel that will go through the eye of a needle. And who's the camel? Zacchaeus. How? Not religious. Sinful in the eyes of the Christians. Yet salvation came to his house. Those who were religious, in good and regular, they went away sorrowful. We are also living in such a time where those who thought were sheep were actually wolves. And those you thought were wolves were the sheep. Because in John he says, I have my sheep who are not yet of this flock. When I will call, 
they will. I want to make a solemn appeal. Are you saying, oh God, I also want to be counted. I also want to shoot. I want to turn. And this turning, you, you don't have to announce it. Gone are the days where I would announce, you know, I, I, I'm now a, a born again Christian. Um, why, why are you announcing it? Let it show. There's no need to defend a caged lion. Just release it. Release it and you'll see. Why are you defending a cage like, you know, I'm a born again Christian. Let it out. And your goodness will simply flow. When he says, you are the light of the world, you are supposed to ask, how can I be the light of the world? Yet in John you say, you are the light of the world. Jesus was a physicist. He knew that if you take a mirror, point it to the sun, the mirror is so faithful to reflect everything that has fallen on its face. <laughs> you can actually project light into a dark room, yet the sun is hidden from that room. Why? Because the mirror will faithfully reflect everything. So when Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, you are the light, he's saying, I'm the light. If you are true and faithful, you reflect what is coming from me, and the world will know. So if you find your words complementing your actions, perhaps you have no actions to show your words. Hence, you need to complement your actions by your words. Actually, uh, I just want you to know, before, because when I came to this country, one thing I noticed, swearing is part and parcel of their language. Where I work, the first week, Say, we've noticed the French that we speak, you don't speak. I said, oh. And he actually used this term. He says, the French that we speak, how come you don't speak? I said, I, I find it funny. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. So each time they're around me now, sorry for my French. I said, no, I forgive you. I'm not French anyway. I never advertised. I never advertised. Guys, don't swear when you're around me because I'm a Christian. No, why do I need to advertise? Let it show that if it's part and parcel of this conversation, count me out. And they know it. So when they speak to me, they know the proper tenses, verbs, and nouns to use. Why? I didn't have to advertise. God is also looking for men and women who will not advertise. Just unleash the lion and it will do its work. So I want to pray with someone who says, oh God, unleash the potential in me. If that's your plea and desire, please stand as we pray. We're about to pray. Thank you for standing up. Thank you for standing up. The prayer that I'm going to pray, the prayer point is, oh God, unleash this potential in us. We don't want to be the rich young ruler, but rather... Let us be the camel that will go through the eye, Zacchaeus. Because if he could fulfill what those who are regarded as religious have failed to do, it's not about works, but it's about the God in you. Many of us have made this whole thing about works. But he says, no, your works are like filthy rags. In fact, let me make this bold statement. We are not saved in holiness, but we are saved for holiness. Because if we were saved in holiness, we would not need Jesus. Because I can boldly stand before him and say, I am holy, I don't need you. But it's because of his holiness that I need to cover for my weakness. Therefore, I am saved for holiness, but I'm not saved in holiness. I know we've been trying and many a times when we try we fail that's why each time you want to do good you fail if you think I'm lying try this just make a mini resolution that as long as I leave this church today I don't want to lie I don't want to commit adultery I don't want to cheat I don't want to covet and I tell you the minute you're going to walk out that door you're going to do exactly those things why just to show you that you're weak. The power is not in you. 
but like a Bluetooth device. Once we connect to the source of love, once that declaration comes, the Bluetooth is successfully connected. Love will flow. So let us pray. Our Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us. But above all, Lord, we want to be like you. Thank you for your word. Your word is always in season and your word has the power to transform. Transform us into your likeness. Above all, may the world see you through us. We do not want to advertise our religion. We do not want to advertise our spirituality. Just like you, when you were walking the face of this earth, never did you advertise. But your goodness flowed from the inside to the outside. And many were drawn unto you. We also want to walk like you. But it's only possible when you reside in us. <coughs> Leave in us, O oh God, and keep us in paths of righteousness. This we pray, not in the name of any man, but only in that name which you gave to men under heaven by which we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus. Let every believing tongue shout amen. amen. God bless you. Can we remain standing for the closing song? Just as we are standing, uh, we are going to sing um, the closing song. Uh, we just want to thank the pastor for beautiful words that uh, we have had. And uh, just... Uh, to bring to your attention that um, the, P the PBE uh, has to occupy the sanctuary. So as we are going to be ushered out by the song, which is I believe it's the women that are in green, as they will be ushering out for, for, for an, an hour extra, we will ask them to quickly come forward and in our closing song, I will ask that we sing the first and the last stanza due to interest of time, as the PBE has to be in uh, liaison with um, the PBE in America. So time is behind us. I just want to apologize on behalf of that, as we will have to quickly do those things. And we will ask as we sing that the PBE, though the, all the PBE children, can they please come forward, those that are in uniform, uh, which is the teachers. As we sing this, uh, we will ask them as well to come forward to, so that they can have a prayer as they are facing some challenges at the moment, you know, some hurdles that are going on at the moment. And we will ask our first elder, Elder Michael White, to, do, to offer that intercession on, on their behalf.
want to come before your throne of grace. Once more, we're thankful, God, for your word. But we ask, lift your face, cause it to shine upon our, our paths, and as we go about, may the world see you through us. And glory and honor returned only to you, for you are worthy. This is our prayer, for we pray through the name of Jesus. Let every believing tongue shout Amen. At this time I will call on the PBA and their teachers to come forward please. As we ask our first elder as well to come and do the prayer on their behalf.